Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. There are a few cases we are following as they progress through the courts, and one of them involves what's going on in Nevada with respect to a, uh, a Marine uh, who was driving through the state, got pulled over, and it turns out he had his life savings on him in cash, and the police took it from him. When he contacted the Institute for Justice to help him, they got involved, and almost immediately upon them getting involved, the state threw his money back at him. Here, take your money, quick, quick, take your money. <laughs> and uh, that might indicate some kind of knowledge of, I don't know, wrongdoing. Uh, and so he filed a lawsuit over that, even though he got his money back, because number one, he was deprived of his money briefly, but the whole process was wrong. And so he's filed a lawsuit in an attempt to help other people to keep this from happening again. And I got a notice from the Institute for Justice to let them know that, that this case is proceeding and something good recently happened on the case. Uh, I got a bunch of emails from viewers who said, Steve, check this out. I thank you very much. And I also got a note from Steve and Laura, who's the guy at the center of the case. I met him in California last year at the Institute for Justice uh, meetup out there on the West Coast. And I mentioned before that when I met this guy, I was stunned and what a humble guy he is, but what a serious guy he is. And so he sent me, you know, it's Steve Hayes, some good news on my case. And he sent me a bunch of links, and we'll get to one of them in a second. And I wrote him back and said, Stephen, and he calls himself Stephen with a PH. <laughs> Thanks for the update. This is good news indeed. Keep up the good fight. And to which he responded, and I hope he doesn't mind. I don't think he will. He says, Steve, you're very welcome, sir. I wholeheartedly agree. They messed with the wrong Marine Quitting isn't in my vocabulary, not even when my case prevails. There are many more people out there that need help, and I fully intend to carry out the oath I made to the Constitution to help in any way that I can. Because remember, when you're in the Marines, you take an oath, and uh, it's always pointed out that it's a mistake to call somebody a former Marine because they will tell you that, no, I'm still a Marine. I might not be on active duty right now, but I'm still a Marine. And I mentioned, I sat next to this guy for dinner one night, Literally sat next to him for an hour, hour and a half, just eating and talking. <laughs> and I was struck. I was struck by his demeanor. Because I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who's got a YouTube channel. And he's addressing me, yes sir, no sir, and all this. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm not used to that kind of respect. Thank you. <laughs> but the headline here from News 4 and Fox 11 out of Nevada, veterans' lawsuit challenging Nevada's civil forfeiture laws will proceed. Court decides a lawsuit involving Nevada State Police is moving forward after a judge denied the state's motion to dismiss the Marine veterans' lawsuit challenging the state's civil forfeiture laws. This comes after his life savings were seized during a traffic stop east of Sparks about three years ago. Back then, Stephen Lara was pulled over on I-80 near USA Parkway for allegedly following a semi-truck too closely. They actually said, we think you were too close to that truck in front of you. After interrogating him, troopers seized his entire life savings in cash from inside the car, which is $87,000. He was not arrested. They did not charge him with a crime. And in fact, the only thing they ever said he'd done wrong was potentially following that other truck too closely. But you see, having that kind of money makes you a criminal of sorts. So they got to take it. They got to take it. Uh, the Texas native was driving across the country to visit his daughters in Portola, California. He's going to visit his daughters, and he's going to help them out financially, which is why he was bringing the money. And again, it is not illegal to possess cash in America. It is not illegal to travel with cash domestically, meaning within the country. If you take cash out of the country or into the country from outside the country, those are different issues. It's not illegal to do that, but you have to report it. There's reporting requirements. Within the country, you can do anything you want with the money, except the police might take it from you and say, well, we're not going to accuse you of a crime, but we're going to take it anyways, and you got to sue us to get it back. So his life savings were returned to him shortly thereafter when he partnered with the Institute for Justice to file a lawsuit against the Nevada Department of Public Safety. Attorneys for the state argued that nothing in Nevada law explicitly permits lawsuits like Laura's. <laughs> you have to understand when you've got an institutional client, they can make you go into court and make a stupid argument. See, if someone comes into my office and goes, I want to hire you, Steve. I'm willing to pay you. I go, okay, let's hear your case. If you tell me a really, really stupid case, I'm going to go, I'm sorry, I can't take that. But I'll pay you. doesn't matter. I won't take it. But if you work for the state... And the state says, go into court 
and say that, yeah, we took the guy's money, but there's no law that says he's allowed to sue us. Um, so they argued that Nevada law does not explicitly permit lawsuits. Meanwhile, the court unanimously found that we simply recognize the longstanding legal principle that a right does not, as a practical matter, exist without a remedy for its enforcement. So <laughs> the courts are pointing out they've got it backwards. Um, you've got the right to enforce your rights unless the laws are changed to change what your rights are. So the court's ruling is a major first step towards justice for Stephen and all victims of unjust civil forfeiture laws, said IG attorney Ben Field. If the government wants to take your money or property, it should first have to prove you did something wrong. Nevada law enforcement should have to follow the Nevada Constitution. See, and what's funny is when you phrase it like that, it sounds so obvious. Laura said that uh, Thursday's decision in Second Judicial Court guarantees that all his claims against Nevada will be heard on the merits I'm very excited that my case can move forward, and I hope that one day we'll have a final victory that I'm sure no Nevadans are subjected to what I was subjected to that day. And that's uh, Laura speaking, Steve Laura. Now, here's the deal. Um, Remember that the court doesn't say that he wins. The court just says, no, he can go to trial. He can get a trial on this. And don't forget that, theoretically, if the state did nothing wrong and if the state is righteous in all their actions, uh, going to court, they should be able to defend themselves. And I am dying to see these same attorneys who say, well, you don't explicitly have the right to sue us, (laughs) argue to a jury about why the government pulls this guy over and they have this lame excuse, let's call it lame, that he was following another truck too closely. They didn't even bother to ticket him, but they took his $87,000 and you can watch the entire stop on YouTube. It was, it was videoed, okay? Body cameras caught the entire thing. He was polite. He was respectful. He was cooperative. And they finally just said, well, you know, we're going to take your money. And um, they'll get to explain that in a court of law. And they can explain how they took his money by saying, we suspect you're up to no good. And then the second he hires an attorney, they give him the money back. And everyone knows why they did that. They did that because they couldn't think of a reason to justify why they kept it when all the news organizations were asking them to explain what they had done. And so the sad part is, I don't know how many civil asset forfeitures occur across America every year. I don't know. I don't know. I know the cumulative amount of money seized is in the billions of dollars with a B, billions of dollars. And so it's a lot of seizures like this, but also smaller and larger. And each and every one of them, theoretically, could wind up in a courtroom and, and, and the state would have to explain why they took the money, what right they had to take the money. And they, as, as, <laughs> as Stephen said in his email to me, they messed with the wrong Marine. And here's the thing. I mean, a lot of people are victims of this. And so when he hooked up the Institute for Justice, they looked at his case and said, wow, this one, this is one that's really going to get people riled up. It's going to. And so when they announced their involvement in the case, like I said, uh, they couldn't give his money back fast enough. And they were hoping that if they gave him back his money, he would just go away. Just, Just pretend nothing happened. Just go away. And of course, he's chosen not to do that. And I've told you before that many of these cases do go away because people can't afford the attorney fees. Well, the Institute for Justice is handling this. And they've got the equivalent of deep pockets, meaning they're going to take this thing to the very end. If it's got to go to the U.S. Supreme Court, they'll take it there. They've taken five or ten cases to the U.S. Supreme Court. They They don't care. They'll do that. State Supreme Courts, sure, all day long. And so you've got a plaintiff, Stephen Lara, and... The attorneys, Institute for Justice, who are like, no, we're in this for the long run. We'll see you in court. So <laughs> I, would, I would hate to be the government attorneys here for the state who have to make arguments such as, he can't sue us. We never told him he could. Because that's basically what they're saying. They're saying the state never gave him permission to sue us. And the court goes, he doesn't need your permission. Oh, do you have another argument? Perhaps one that'll get a little further than that or no? So there you go. So it is, a, it is good news. They won a motion. So, of course, that could get appealed higher or it could get sent back down.
But we'll see what happens. But this is good. They, they, they won this battle. So we'll see what happens. But I can tell you right now, Stephen ain't giving up. And the Institute for Justice ain't giving up. And as I always tell you, I'm going to put a link to the Institute for Justice below in the comment box beneath the video. Please go look at their website. You can find cases like this in the stories and the updates. And they exist entirely on the support of just good people who donate to them. It's tax deductible, all that, right? So check out the website in the link below. And if you find it in your heart to support good cases like this one, donate, okay? Veterans lawsuit challenging Nevada's civil forfeiture laws will proceed to court decides. And that was sent by almost everybody. News 4 and Fox 11 digital staff put that out. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Thought Bubble, when Canadian robot lady drives her car, does that make it an autonomous vehicle?